Only now do I really miss my desk. A toast to Otakon 2012 and all those who can make it possible. So, at the end of my last Otakon video, one year ago. Look how far I've come. <clears throat> and no, I'm not being sarcastic. I mean, look how far I've come. Mm. It has been a strange journey. I don't really know what to say. I guess I thought that Otakon 2012 would be different because so much has changed in my life for the better or just for the more interesting factor. I actually am not only dead tired, but so mentally just so much happened. It was so... I wrote notes. Yes, to categorize my thoughts. <clears throat> Last year at the end of my 2011 video, I said that there were some things that I had to get straight in my life before I went back to another Otakon. And if you had asked me, say, hmm, about maybe December, if I had sorted all those things out, I would have told you no. But I did. I finally figured everything out. The day started kind of weird for me, and this is just on a personal note that um, somebody from exactly one year and about a week ago I screwed over kind of bad, really bad, in a way that I'm, I can never talk about it. But uh, this morning when I was going to catch a check, get some money out for the Otakon, I see this guy at my bank standing next to me in line. It was so awkward. But then he was about to leave, I called out his name, and I took off my sunglasses, and I looked him in the eye, and I just apologized for what I did. I shook his hand, and I don't know if that's the end of it, but yeah. So it's an interesting fact that just a year ago, this whole horrible mess got in the way of Otakon, and now I'm redeemed, sort of. So it was really interesting to start off the day like that. Um, so Zach and me, um, we took my car this time, drove on up into Baltimore. The weather, the traffic was great. Well, the traffic was great. The weather was really hot. We got there a little bit later than usual, and we had to stand in line for an extra long time. <laughs> real bad. Um, the heat, you know, to quote Steve Harvey about going over to Africa, the heat be just leaning on you. The sun's just leaning on you going, how's it going, buddy? So, got there a little bit late. We just hung out in line. Um, Zach immediately wanted to get the dealer's floor because he's not really into anime. I'm not super into anime, but I like a little bit of it. I mean, I'm not as anime, you know, into anime as I am into comics, and then again, I'm only into indie comics, and I'm obviously not as into anime as I am into knives. Um, cutlery and weaponry and what have you, but I still like it, probably more than he does, know a little bit more. He expected me to, like, know all the people that were cosplaying as, like, he's like, who's that? Who's that? And I'm like, man, I don't know, I'm just as lost as you. If I see somebody I recognize, I'd probably just say it. Um, so, yeah. Um, he wanted to get to the dealer's floor. The dealer's floor was, like, mega crowded. 
Um, there was just so many people there that we couldn't even get in until like 2 o'clock. Uh, we met up some, with some people that we knew from the first con, didn't hang out long, watched some Lupin the Third. Ba -da -ba -da. Um, a weirder, older, unedited version of it. Had some uh, interesting, uh, interesting stuff. Um, yeah, we, we finally hit up the dealer's floor. Um, oh, wait, I'm skipping notes already. Because we didn't hit up the dealer's floor. Nah, nah. Okay. Oh, that's right, yeah. Um, somewhere in the crowd, uh, we, we couldn't go to the dealer's floor immediately. We, uh, we started to mingle. some footage of me riding down an elevator. Escalator. I don't know. Um, we met up with uh, Harry Mason. He was looking for his daughter. Have you seen my daughter? She's about this high, dark hair. She turned seven just last month. What else would he be doing? I'm, I'm reading off bullet points on a note. Isn't this a Tolstoy video? Just roll it. It's good footage. <laughs> We went up to the balcony. Um, none of the um, sprinklers were turned on. That was kind of a downer. Last year I got to sit out with the crew, chill, by the fountains, talk about some stuff. But out there, it was this weird kind of moment because there was almost no one out there because it was so hot. And uh, there was like this like electric violinist just like rocking cocks right there out on the fucking balcony. <laughs> He was good enough that I, I, I actually I slid a few bucks into his uh, case. He, he earned it. Damn. So, and that's the thing I was thinking is, you know, that's one of the cool things about Otakon. It's like, the, you know, you don't see... I'm going to stop posing with my list, I don't know. It doesn't seem like Tolstoy to have a list. I feel like, hey, let me get my reading glasses on, I'm so old and me. Um, it doesn't feel like Otakon, or it doesn't feel like, the you know, Otakon should be more like the real world, you know what I mean, or vice versa. Like, he could be out on the streets doing that anywhere. But because of, you know, police and businesses and zoning laws and all that crap and busking laws and panhandling laws, he probably can't. But just out of nowhere, just, you know, just sitting on the, sitting out there, just rocking fucking out, man, on the, on the damn violin. Really cool. Love it. Love it. Um, so we finally got into the dealer's floor. And that's kind of where the bulk of this video is going. Zach really, really was only there for... I mean, he was there for the people, and it kind of enjoy himself, but lately he's been on this whole kick about um, classic or old video games. Um, he sometimes complains that nobody understands it, but I'm like, yeah, it's, it's kind of weird and esoteric. People do understand it. You're just really, really, really into it. I mean, damn. So, I guess that's how it is when I start ranting to people about, like, steel types and, like, you know, how they brew bourbon. But, um... Yeah, so here's some, actually some footage of us later on. Um, we're having lunch. This is him, like, some of the games that he bought. So, yeah, we're at Otakon 2012, and 
technically we're at a like a bar and grill, like a sushi grill. Yeah, or whatever. Kona Kona Grill Bar. I don't I don't remember. Um, but uh, yeah, the main reason I came here because they have some a few good deals on video games. First deal I got was uh, Jet Grind Radio, still sealed, never been opened. Uh, with the booklet, you can tell it's never been opened because that booklet would be missing. The quantity, it's the shine of the, of the seal, probably broken. Yeah, it's. I mean, I thought it was a good deal. It was 15 bucks. Not bad. Second game I got. Choo Choo Rocket for 15 bucks, never been opened. I thought that was a good deal. I've never played this one actually. It's one of the few Dreamcast games that I kind of wanted to play over time. Cause it's some weird puzzle game and it's, it's fun. I mean, it's something a little fun game. They don't make games like that anymore. And uh, the last one I, I thought was a steal, Monster Rancher, it's 20 bucks. And uh, it's one of the games I've been looking for. And if I hadn't come here, maybe I wouldn't have gotten it, so. And that was just like the first half. He, he bought like a little more than that later. A lot more than that later. God damn, he, he cleaned out those uh, <laughs> he cleaned out those dealers. I'm a little bit ashamed of how much I bought. It really wasn't that much money, actually. I didn't spend that much on that. I spent probably more on this bottle of 12-year-old aged perfection Jameson. That just dripped whiskey on my pants that I had dry cleaned. Oh, well. It's whiskey. It cleans, right? Um, plus, more on this bottle than I did really at the well, a little bit more at the Otacon, and this wasn't all that expensive. Ah, mm. oh. hmm. You know, you're like a level twelve alcoholic when you can like balance your drink with like you know a stack of books on your head and <clears throat> figure everything else out. So, yeah, he was really kind of mainly there for that. And the dealer's floor was interesting. We spent most of our time slumming it down there. Ah, I'm not super proud of that. It's not really in the spirit of Otakon to spend money. And then we didn't really watch too much anime, actually. We didn't see too many videos. And I know your first reaction, Tolstoy. Are you going back tomorrow? Because it is only Friday upon filming this. I actually think this will probably be my last convention. For reasons that I'll explain why. And they're not sad reasons. They're just reasons. Hmm. That is smooth, Jameson. Worth the extra money? Probably not. But it's smooth, Jameson. Oh, right. So the bulk of my video. I suppose I could talk about some swag. Got a bag of swag over here. Some cool things that I bought. Show and tell. It's what Tolstoy's best at. It's kind of a douchey move, seeing I have, have so much way more footage. But while we're on the dealer's floor, let's talk about it. First and foremost, there was... A shit ton of plastic crap there. I think that's plastic crap. So at that booth, I actually decided to buy for like 27 bucks. It really was not 27. I got a model kit. Let me let me let me kind of give you an explanation here. A uh, local uh, local comic, you know, it's not a comic book store. That was just a random brain fart. A local um, uh, game store, Power Gamer. I talk about it a lot. You know, it's like independent. It's not Power Gamer. It's not um, GameStop or whatever. They have um, <clears throat> they have like a Zoids. They have like import Japanese games and stuff. They're kind of like a hipster game store, and they're cool. But um, they had a Zoids model. It was sitting on the shelf, and I've been going to the store for six years. Six years it sat there. So one day I'm like, hey, how much is it? And they're like, $39.99 or $29.99. And I'm like, hey, look, could you bring it down to 20 All I only ask is it's been there for six years. Six years. It's not going anywhere. And um, the guy called up his superior who owns the store. And he's like, I really can't let it go for any less than, you know, $29.99 or $35, I forget. But I'm just like, all right, that's cool. And I'm not angry. I just walked out and I said, hey, a sale's better than no sale. It's gonna sit there for six fucking years. You gonna sell it? No. And this is a bigger, better model kit that I got for 27. It just, sometimes, I, you know, this whole, the nerd culture is starting to get choked up with this too big to fail shit. You know what I mean? Like the industry's like airsoft. You know, like, you know, oh, well I can charge a shit ton for a shitty airsoft gun because I'm too big to fail. Kids want airsoft guns. You know, it's, it's demand, I guess. And I'm like, really? That much of a demand that I actually 
on the dealer's floor saw my MP5K, which I originally got for 50 bucks for 170 You're not too big to fail, okay? Can't charge that kind of money. Whatever. I found this. I was looking at all the different Gundam kits. I was going to get one that was actually 59 bucks because it looked big and Billy Badass. But to be honest, I just didn't feel the style. Between, and I told this to a lot of different people. I even talked about this to a guy at the convention. You've got... On one end of the spectrum, you've got Gundam, which is like, it's so abstract, you know, the, the art style, that I, you know, it's, it's, it's too arty, and to me, I can't really see the mechanics of it. I know it does look mechanical, but... And then on the other end, you got Mech Warrior, and Mech Warrior is so militarized and squared and boxed off, I'm like, ugh. And then in between, you got Armored Core. And if you haven't played Armored Core, go play it now. If you didn't like it, kill yourself. No, not any of this weird, and two sucked, three sucked, four sucked, four A answers sucked. I mean, it was okay, but the best one was number one. And that was sort of like a hybrid between kind of artistic, customized robots and militarized, more, less sleek, more squared off bots. It was, it's, it's hard to explain, but I kind of felt that this, like, Nazi droid looking bot kind of embodied what I was looking for. Nice, dude. I can't wait to put this bastard together. I haven't done one of these in years, and yes, I'm doing a YouTube video about it. It's like five more YouTube videos I haven't published yet. Stay tuned. The best is yet to come. Well, maybe not. We'll talk about that in the end. So, that was the first big purchase. Actually, the biggest purchase. I speak in accent now. I don't know why. In my beige swag. So I collected a lot of dice this time. Everyone knows that I collect dice from every convention, every comic book store, but I never got one from Otakon. Weird, right? Oh, and by the way, quick side note, all the blade vendors there, I don't know how you get away with selling these cheap, shitty mall swords, but you should be ashamed. I mean, last year I think there was like a little bit of damn decency, but this year they're like, eh, that's a Damascus steel. You use that word like it's like, like money shot. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Damascus steel? Okay. It, it, it's a legendary steel. It, it probably doesn't exist. It, it, you know, we have some like historical accounts of steel from Damas, which is probably, I think, how you pronounce it. It's how they said it in Assassin's Creed. And that is factual. I don't fucking know. Um, you know, it, it, just, it just seemed bushwhacking. There's this new brand called Musha. You mean Musashi? I knew there was a brand called Musashi that was like... And it, Musha seems the same thing. The $80 range. The non-Widowmaker but will break one day range. To put things in perspective, perhaps if you can see the handles back there. 150. Nice steel holds up okay. I, I let it rust really bad because I chopped some vegetation and did not lube it. Yes, I said lube it. Um, second one in, 130, bottom one, 220. That's how much you gotta pay. And honestly, it's like at this point with my study of swords in the market and stuff like that, I can just look and see a cheapie. I saw one Musha sword there for 80 that had actual ray skin wrapping on the Ito, on the, yeah, and I was like, this actually seems okay, and the, the Suba seemed cool, the Suba was like, wasn't, I think it was iron, it wasn't, wasn't brass, um, but I was just like, dude, $80, you're gonna spend the $80 on that, or you wanna buy a better sword from, you know, a Chenis for double that, you're already halfway there to a better, like, a oh, ten times better sword, so, and when I'm posing with my thing in my hand here, bought a lot of dice, um, one of the first dice that I bought was a little overpriced, but it's, it's, it's a dice that, like, when you roll it onto 20, it lights up. It's red. I bought it with my money that I earned by working in a pharmacy. And I cannot open this bastard. I'm starting to sweat a little bit, A, from the liquor, and B, from the fact that I'm in my room, which is, like, the least ventilated room in the house with all the damn lights on. And I don't care, because I've been sweating all day. If it makes me look bad, it makes me look bad. I don't care. Open the box. I'm going to eviscerate the box. It came in a cute little box, but guess what? Fuck you, box. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, I've been sweating all day. It's, it's a hot. It's summer, dude. It's I'm gonna retard here for dressing in a fucking business suit that's black. Anyway, how do you turn this fucker on? You probably can't change the batteries on this. I just now realized. Anyway, so you set it to 20, you have a critical hit, and it lights up. That's what it does when you roll a 20. Somebody texted me. Hey, I rolled another 20. There you go. Look at me, my critical hits. Tolstoy always rolls 20s. Tolstoy rolls more than that. Uh, weird reference, no, but I don't really. Who texted me? 
Kenneth Scott Randazzo. God damn it, why did you send me Man Misty? He just sent me a text message with Man Misty. Christ. Yeah, um, good friend of mine, um, Kenny. Saw him there at the convention. Yeah. And, uh, he dresses up as a scout. He looks almost exactly like the damn scout, honestly. I mean, the cartoon of it looks just like fucking him. Yo, it's a scout. I need a dispenser here. So, come on up here. Give me a dispenser. I need it. Why did, you, why did you break my stupid crap? I was using my stupid Moron. crap. Moron. You broke it because crap. I needed that intelligence. Mine. Not yours. Um, I actually, I, he was a fan of my videos, sort of. Fan. I hate saying the word fan because it means that people just, no, they like you, Tolstoy. Like, eh, I don't really know about that. I mean, he's a person, and he wanted to talk to me. He finds me interesting for a minute. Who cares? Um, yeah, so he was uh, he was there at the Otacon, too. He saw my videos and then messaged me. He's like, we should meet up. We're in the same area. And so we met up, and we talked. We hung out, and it's, it's whatever. He was the first person who showed me Ellicott City because I've never been there. He said, quote, it looks the way that you dress. If you ever go to Maryland, Ellicott, old historic Ellicott is pretty fucking cool. Anyway, so I've got off topic now, um, but anyway, here's another big purchase for $16. Mm -hmm. It's glass or crystal. I thought I broke it because I dropped it in the parking garage like a jackass. Oh, uh, wait, before I show you this. Dice. What did I, what did I say? I thought I bought more dice than that. Yeah, I did. Come on, you fucker. Get out of there. Jesus Christ. Um, yeah. Different colored dice. I just like them, I guess. I don't know. I just like 27 dice. And I have a shrine of them growing around my statuette of Cthulhu. I don't care what you think of me. For real, motherfucker. Anyway. So, let's look at Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull, which I dropped in the parking lot and see if it's actually still intact. Holy shit, what do you know? Fucker is still intact. It's a crystal skull. I don't know why. I've always wanted one. My mom always had some weird fascination with the crystal skull. The actual, not the fucking movie, that, that gay fourth movie that they added onto a series that only needed three. Um, the actual legend of the crystal skull. I don't know. It's just one of those things. My dad's obsessed with Kennedy assassination. I kind of did a lot of research on Columbine. Same deal. Either way. Look at that. It's a fucking crystal skull. They make crystal skull vodka, which comes in a... Crystal Skull. Really cool. Always wanted to buy it, drink it, keep the skull out which, but it has this fucking spout on the top where you pour. Now I have one with that. Don't know where I'll put it. I'm running out of room in my room for cool shit. My room is stacked to the max with cool shit. Speaking of which, cover the last fucking thing. A fan. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, a fan. I saw somebody dressed almost like me, like a white Yakuza whip one of these out there and start fanning themselves and actually kind of reminded me of uh, the Boss Tanaka scene from Kill Bill 1. So cool, I thought, hey, maybe I need one. And if not, I mean, uh, I'll put it back there on the guitar case or something cool like that. I'd... Somebody was parodying my videos, uh, this English kid who's doing this line of videos where he pretends to be different YouTubers. If I was this YouTuber, this is how I'd act. And he parodied me and like, he's like from Scotland or England? And all he said in the end was, all right, time to go, time, time to go back to collecting plastic crap and stuff from Asia, which everyone knows is awesome. And I'm like, yeah, everyone does know is awesome. Actually, I don't just collect Asian things. My style is a mix between Asia and Western, um, like, Deco, interbellum, World War, between World War I and World War II artifacts. You would know that if you were, the camera was facing this way, because that is the American side and that's the Asian side, but the camera's never really fucking facing that way. Um, and this isn't like an original concept. Firefly did an amazing job of blending Eastern and Western, and even before that, my mom was decorating like that, and even before that, my grandma was decorating like that. So it's kind of a family thing. Yes, I decorate, and I'm not gay. Surprise. So wait, oh shit, what did she tell me? Always to the right. Yeah, look at that. Dude, a silk fan. Looks pretty cool. I don't know about the color. I wish it could have had it in jade. I like jade, okay? <sighs> that is good. Honestly, right now, that feels so good. You don't even know. The Japanese used to use fans as a method of communication during war. Those giant fans you see, war fans. They would flay them open. That's kind of that whole thing in 
you know, anime and then Kill Bill and then, you know, the Eastern stuff, where you see them <laughs> displaying that, they would have fans and they would use the fans for different motions to mean different battle tactics. Or so I've read. I don't really fucking know. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, that's an orgasm in a hat right there, my friends. Trying to return these fuckers a little hard without, like, kind of hurting them. The girl explained that when they're new, they kind of don't want to, they, they, their action will better in time. I want to learn how to, like, do it, like, with one hand. Like, shot! Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, this one's fairly nice. See, so, but you gotta kind of, when it gets jammed like that, you sort of have to like, help it along. Help it grow! There you go. Apparently they wear in, is what I'm told. They wear in. So, these are the things that I bought. <clears throat> Hate me for being a sick pig dog rat capitalist American? That's fine, I agree. Um, yes. Hmm. In dealer's floor, I saw some interesting fucking breakdancing. Yeah, I didn't know Sasuke could shake that shit either, but apparently he can. Might have been a woman. I didn't pay close enough attention. So after which, we decided to get some grow, because I hadn't eaten all day, and I hadn't eaten all the whole day before, and I ran for 30 minutes on Friday to try to be less of a fatty. That's right, Tolstoy's trying to de -fatitize. Is it working? I don't know. Take a look at some footage. <laughs> Yeah, it's some disgusting footage of me eating. But it was so good. That wine was called, oh, what was the wine called? God damn it, I was supposed to remember. Fuck. It was a new kind of wine. I don't like Tolstoy needs more liquor. Tolstoy needs more liquor. Um, yeah. So we ate at this little fancy place. It cost us like 60 bucks. But it was, it was good. What can I say? I really like sushi. Done well. That's not the best sushi. Better sushi can be found in Annapolis. Just saying. Back to the list. But guess what? We're using it as a dab now. Ah, hmm. I sweat on that shit now. Hmm. Yeah, um, we had Ice Cool Water Guy make a return. It's only one dollar. It's only one dollar. And then Ice Cool Water. So, that was pretty cool. And um, then we met, uh, oh, nope, I already used that footage. I just now remember that I was talking about earlier. Uh, Black Wolfwood made an appearance. Why is that cross so heavy? Because it's full of his mercy, my friend. That's right. So full of his mercy. Why is there sweat pouring down my face? Why is it hot in the summer? Can't we have eternal coldness? I demand it. Um, come to the end of this video. Be cool. Let's see, uh, oh, <laughs> on the dealer's floor. This, um, this kind of got my billy goat. Um, they kind of had, like, this weird, like, pole set up. And female skimpy cosplayers were coming up and attempting to pole dance. Except for it was really bad. <laughs> like, they didn't know what the fuck they were doing. First thing when they told me about this was happening, one of the guys that we conned with last year just went, oh, guess what they have down on the dealer's floor? Ba ba ba. I think some other girls probably might have done a better job. That footage is from some girl who kind of was just like, yeah, but most of them just looked like they were fucking, didn't know what they were doing. And two things, which is one, I didn't like the fucking concept. And when I, I, I he told me that they were going to have, I forget what he called it, like, panty and stocking dance, some shit like that. I was just like, oh, kind of taken back. And he said, like, oh, and you don't enjoy that? Like... Yeah, look, there's a lot of hot honeys at Otakon, but it seems like it's perpetuating a stereotype of otaku. That we're all a bunch of, well, first of all, it's mainly, you know, I could say it's mainly male, but it's not. There's a lot of chicks there. Last year I said there was a lot of poser chicks there. 
chicks just dressing up as characters they don't really understand or care about just to seem hip and cool. Another chance to dress up as a hot character and have geek boys drool over them, and that's what I didn't like about it. This concept of, like, oh, the pole dancing bitch, like, come on, man. You know, your shit's not that hot, and I'm not that low down on the level that I'm going to sit here and sweat over you. And I actually went up to the booth, and I asked if I could show them how it's done. I said, I will dance for you. I will do a pole dance that is better than this shit. And they said no. And they tried to avoid saying that they didn't want men to do it, or like, over oh, only letting women do it. They said, oh, only people who cosplay as certain characters. I mean, well, technically, no, that would make them not faggots, because they didn't want me to dance. Right. Oh, and on the dealer's floor, I also met the Nostalgia Critic. That shit was weird. Nostalgia Critic, you're, um, your Bart's, your Bart's Nightmare playthrough sucks. What's wrong with that? I tried! What do you people want from me? Gah! Just saying, Bart's Nightmare was bad. I'm just kidding. It was terrible. No, I'm just kidding, it wasn't really him. We saw a few Nostalgia Critics. Kind of pissed off they let Spoonie go. We had a long conversation about that. A walking bush recognized me from my YouTube videos. All right, so we've got Gilly suit here. What are you, Call of Duty, Call of Duty, Black Ops? Call of Duty, All right, Modern Warfare. So yeah. The number one, not the not the Black Ops or anything. No, not Black Ops. All right. It's number one. All right. So where are you coming from? Where you live, man? Uh, Virginia, actually. Come all the way from Virginia. Ever go to Anime USA? No, I went to uh, Techno Show Con. Actually, that was my first con, and nice. then I saw your video, and I was like, whoa, there's another con. Yeah, me. Anime USA was uh, that was kind of a drag. Everyone was just uh, like, "Why are you doing things that are not mandated?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I don't know. I just thought it'd be different." <laughs> anyway, so uh, that looks like an actual ghillie suit. Where's that coming from? Uh, Did you buy that like a military store? Or? Yeah, this is what it came from. And then these are just recon paintball gloves. Yeah, and paintball gloves nerf. basically. We build a Nerf. So hey, let me ask him. What do you think about uh, you seeing the airsoft guns around here? You do any airsoft or no? Yeah, I do a lot of the airsoft. So what do you think about some of the guns I got out here? Pretty wicked, actually. I saw one with a really? laser, but some of them I was like, eh, it could be better. I've been seeing the quality, and I'm like, I, I don't know. Uh, they had the gun that I have, Galaxy MP5K submachine gun, and they had that for twice what I bought it for. Oh. I know the market's kind of gone to hell, but yeah. Jesus. I think it's just the internet versus getting it here at the con, I think. Why is it more expensive here at the con, though? Don't you think it should be less? Uh, I think it should be cheaper because they're bringing it to us, but I exactly. mean... Exactly. It just happens. I mean, like, we shouldn't be paying for, like, shipping and stuff. So. I know, right? But at least, hey, they're, they're kind of skimping on state tax. <laughs> I mean, um, anyway. So I talked to that guy. Yeah. That's it. That's all the footage I had. That's all I got for today. Today's Otakon was kind of a letdown. And it ending on a less than high energy note. And that's okay. That's okay with me. My life has changed a lot since 2011. 2011 was honestly my rock fucking bottom. And it wasn't even that bad. I had food. I had booze. I had a bed. Suddenly Tolstoy's looking up. Or I'm trying to. I feel afraid that if I start thinking positively that all of a sudden all the bad stuff will return. But you know what? I'm not that afraid. If it comes back, I dealt with that shit before. And 2012 hasn't been so good to me. I mean, it's not like the world's been perfect. It's been beyond untouchable. But it's been pretty fucking good. And I should be happy for what I have. And you know what? For the first time in eight years of my life, I'm doing a lot fucking better. But that's the weird thing. I thought Otakon would be like the orgasm, the cap, the cherry on top. But it wasn't. Something about it. Not enough people met there, didn't spend enough time. I feel defeated because we didn't go and see enough anime, but that's not really it. I'm moving in a different direction. I'm just not that into anime. And I, I have been watching some. Um, Kenny lent me his box set of Goran Lagan. Goran Lagan, whatever. I meant to finish that. And that's another thing. Kenny was right about that. That's a cool fucking anime. He talked about how he liked how, like, Kamina is like so over the top, like always ready for anything. I like that positive energy. I've been leaning away from anything that's negative. I don't like listening to angry music that much anymore. But we're, we're, we're trailing off. Um, this is kind of my self-important douchey rant. Oh wait, there was more footage. What the shit, did I miss one? Um, Zack was knighted by a knight of Nintendo.
I, the knight of Nintendo, knight thee, Sir Goggle of Hatland. You may arise. Thank you. Yeah, that shit fucking happened. On the streets of Baltimore, Inner Harbor. Right by the stank of Baltimore. The Inner Harbor. Of the bay that we pollute and destroy for all the other states that are around us. Hey, Virginia. Hey, Pennsylvania. Suck it. We destroyed that shit. Fuck you. Anyway, I'm just kidding. But, um... I don't know. I'm just moving on with my life, and I just don't think I'll go back to another con. It's not my deal. If it was cheaper, then yeah. That's the thing! They charged 80 bucks this year, and it's like, once you pay your 80, then all of a sudden there's all this pressure to have fun. So it's not as much fun. Remember back in the day, back in 2004, when I first went to Otakon, and it was 15 bucks for one day, 30 bucks for two days, 50 bucks for all three days. Whatever happened to being able to pay 15 bucks to get in? Yeah, that changed, didn't it? Not about the music anymore, is it, motherfucker? Anyway. But it was a good time. Yeah.